Holy Gospel for the second Sunday in Advent is according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. <laughs> days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand for this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord make his path straight now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the people, all the region around the Jordan were going out to him. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when John saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming in to be baptized, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. My friends in Christ, grace and peace, repentance and hope to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text today is the Gospel, just read from Matthew, and our theme is, Prepare the Way for Jesus. First, I'd like to ask for a little bit of grace from you this morning, because uh, I developed some laryngitis late in the week, as you can probably tell. Uh, we've been doing a lot of watching of our grandkids in the past few days. And so please bear with me uh, as, as I continue. Matthew Johnson, a Chicago area pastor, once told this Advent story about his ever thrifty grandparents and their farmhouse in central Indiana. They rewashed and used every possible plastic bag. They maintained their orange striped wallpaper and lumpy green carpet as generations rose and fell. Then one day, to the family's surprise, a construction crew arrived to transform their simple back stoop to a grand concrete patio. Trees and shrubs were removed. Dirt was scraped flat and leveled. Gravel was brought in by the truckload. Ornamental flower beds suddenly rose up. All that work created quite a disturbance for the local critters that lived in the long untouched soil surrounding the house. A horde of mice relocated to the farmhouse and set off all the traps. Slithering creatures of all sorts made their way across the freshly poured concrete slab only to get stuck. As the grandkids expressed their fear and concern about these unwanted visitors, Grandma reminded them, when you cause a ruckus, you're always gonna stir things up. <laughs> but then came the snakes. 
Grandma in her pink nightgown and Grandpa's mud-clad boots was hanging up the laundry when a pair of gray rat snakes shimmied their way across those new slabs. Yelps of surprise, laundry basket flying. Grandma grabbed her hoe and quickly dispatched the snakes. When Grandpa heard the screams, he came rushing back and met Grandma on the driveway, and they had some words. Grandma won. This is why we leave things as they are. Christmas is just three weeks away from today. By now, most of us are in full Christmas swing, buying gifts, decorating the home and yard, baking cookies, making and sending our cards, fussing with those outdoor lights again. Everyone seems to be busy getting ready for Christmas. In the middle of all our busyness, here enters an unlikely character, John the Baptist, a scruffy, outdoorsy kind of guy, beard sticky with honey, bad locust breath, wearing an untanned camel hair coat. Then he calls us to repent, prepare the way. For what? For whom? He isn't about leaving things as they are. He's all about stirring things and people up. His message is, prepare the way of the Lord by making his paths straight. Live in hope and unity, believing in God's promises. Repent, for the kingdom of God has come near. Confess your sins to the Lord. Bear fruit worthy of repentance. For the Lord is coming soon. Wake up, repent, turn around, trust God, and live in hope, and get a new recipe for life. My seminary preaching professor, Dr. Paul Harms, tells the story of a married woman who tried to be a scrupulous cook when it came to complicated recipes. She often tried to please her husband who liked to have spaghetti at least once a week. But she always missed the mark. He couldn't tell her what it was, but it just wasn't like the spaghetti he ate at home growing up. So she consulted his mother, then meticulously followed her recipe and directions. But it still didn't taste the same. She wouldn't quit. Then one day it happened. <clears throat> One afternoon, she was distracted near the end of making another perfect sauce when a close friend called her. Momentarily, she lost track of time as she cooked and listened to her friend's good news. The sauce? Well, you know what happened. It burned, but she served it anyway. Miraculously, her husband, he praises on her. It tasted just like his mother's sauce. <laughs> she had discovered the secret of making good spaghetti sauce was to burn it until it was almost ruined. <laughs> it was time to make a new spaghetti recipe for her husband. I think that is something like what the church's message is today in this holy season. All of us need a new recipe for living the life that Christ won for us on his cross. But many folks today would rather just leave things as they are. John's cry to repent, turning away from sin and changing the direction of your life isn't what we want to hear in these jolly busy days. Yet John's call, make no mistake, is for you and me, just as it was for those who went out into the wilderness seeking something at the Jordan River 2,000 years ago. The good grain will be taken into the barn, but the waste will be burned with unquenchable fire. John isn't talking literally here about actual crops in the field. Instead, he's referring to Jesus who's coming to harvest his crop of souls 
to separate the sheep from the goats, as Matthew says. The good grain, those who have repented of their sin, tried to follow Christ and confessed him as their Lord and Savior, will receive God's unfading crown of glory. But those who haven't, won't. Now don't turn out John just yet, perhaps thinking that and maybe saying that the church is so hypocritical and judgmental. Can't we just live and let others live? It's true. It isn't very popular to proclaim God's truth about sin, hell, and damnation in these days of diversity, equity, and inclusion. People find that very off-putting. Too much law. Where's the grace, they say. Instead, let's just stress the joy of Christmas. But how can you have the joy of Christmas without the harsh words of John? Repent, give yourself up, turn away from your sins, start living in a new direction set by God's compass, the Bible, not your own values and beliefs. What's more important, preparing for the celebration of Christ's birthday or preparing to see him when he comes? Getting the lights up and the cookies baked or holding on to Jesus with all your heart, mind, strength, and soul? Is it the celebration of Christmas, the holiday, or is the Christ of Christmas what really matters that will truly satisfy us? We need Jesus Christ, especially in this day, to be our God, to save us from ourselves before we smother in religious sanctimony. We need him by our baptism into his death and resurrection to daily kill us to sin and give us a new life. But many folks secretly wish that Jesus weren't so demanding, didn't ask so much of us, was just nice and stayed the cute baby in the manger for a little while longer. They wish that following him wasn't so hard and inconvenient. Then we could go merrily on with our Christmas preparations and not worry about the messiness of preparing the way of the Lord into our hearts. And trust me, it is messy work. We have to die daily to those sins that can feel so good and those old habits that shut our hearts out to God. Die to those old ways of thinking, acting, and being so Christ can come again, stir you up, and give you a brand new heart and soul cleansed of all sin and evil. Why not spend the next three weeks before Christmas preparing the way of the Lord? Ask God to clean your heart. Light your Advent wreath and ponder the darkness of your sin and the light of Jesus Christ. Parents and grandparents, don't let your young people and little ones go through the season knowing more about Santa than Jesus and his gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Some people spend more time with that dreaded elf on the shelf who supposedly spies on kids to see whether they're being naughty or nice instead of telling them about Christ and his love for them. And don't be ashamed to let others see you pray or read the Bible. Don't be too busy to open your Advent calendar window every day or read a brief daily devotion for Advent posting online by the NALC or Lutheran Hour Ministries. Start a few new spiritual recipes. Sponsor a family through a local school or community organization. Volunteer at a local food pantry, soup kitchen, hospital, assisted living, or hospice. It may be hard and awkward for you at first, but just do it. And while you're doing other things this Advent season, don't be too busy to prepare the road of your heart 
to welcome Jesus Christ and others as he first welcomed you. Pick up the rocks of your spiritual laziness and fill in those potholes of sin, temptation, and spiritual blindness and accommodation to cultural values. Ask God to smooth out the rough places of your road and make your heart's path straight for him to enter again. Make no mistake, Jesus Christ, the root of Jesse has come, is with us and will come again to bring new life from what seemed to be a bare stump and fruit from a withered tree. He'll come to restore your life in all your dead places and enter the wilderness of your hearts. Get spiritually stirred up and follow God's new recipe for your life. The old won't do. Our comfortable ways of acting, living, and thinking no longer will be useful spiritually. It's time to prepare your way for the Lord to make straight paths for him in your lives. That's the new recipe that our Lord is busy cooking up in you. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.